welcome to this module on functions in Q. This is the fifth module in our fundamentals series. So if you haven't yet seen the modules previous to this one, please feel free to check those out first. In this module, we'll be looking at functions and in particular user defined functions. So up to now, we've been looking at a lot of functions in Q and they've all been our inbuilt functions. So anything that's listed here under keywords or operators, they're all inbuilt functions in Q. So we're going to be looking at what are functions and function valence, which is our number of input parameters we have in a function, then how we can define our own functions and some best practices around that. Then we look at explicit versus implicit parameters. We'll also talk about function scoping and then finish up looking at projections. So let's get started. So first of all, what are functions? So a function is simply a sequence of expressions that are operated on some provided inputs to give some output. So functions in Q work like functions in any other programming language. However, there are some differences um, in terms of syntax and rules around creating functions. So we'll be looking at that in this module. Um, and functions can be described by a few key features. So the first one is their input parameters. So this can be also none. So we can have functions that are parameterless. Um, and this is known as the function valence. So we can have up to eight parameters in our function. The second feature of a function is the logic itself. So that's the code that you have within your function that actually makes it do what you want it to do. And the third thing is the function return. And again, this can be nothing. So we can have functions that don't return anything, which is completely fine. Okay, so let's start off looking at function valence. So as I mentioned, this simply means the number of input parameters or arguments that you have in your function. And it's important to note if you provide a lesser number of parameters than is required, um, then you end up creating a projection. And then if you provide too many, you get a rank error. So let's look at that in action. So we're using our additive operator here or our plus, and you can see we're calling this um, in functional notation here. So we're just simply adding three plus four. So when we run that with two parameters, it's fine. When we just pass one parameter, we see we've created a projection here. And then when we pass it three parameters, you see we get a rank error. So it's just a note here on some of the terminology used when we talk about functions. So when we have a function that takes two parameters, that's called dyadic functions. When it takes one parameter, otherwise known as unary, that's called a monadic function. And then when you have functions that don't take any parameters, that's known as niladic. When you see those words, it can, might be a little bit daunting for non-technical users or beginners to um, the language. Don't be afraid or scared off. All it means is simply the number of parameters it takes. Um, so we have a few examples here. So if this is in a monadic function. So we've got one, two, three here, which is actually a list. So that's our one input. And we're running the function neg on that, which will basically make all that list full of negative values. That's a monadic function. And then we're showing an example here of a niladic function. And we can tell it's niladic. We're not passing anything. And we've got this empty square brackets here representing that. So this is an inbuilt function as part of our .q name space. So if we check over here on .q and go to GC, we can find all about the garbage collect function. So definitely go and read a little more about that. At a high level, what it does is reclaim the memory or free it up using that function. So let's run that and see what happens. Um, we have no memory to be freed up, so we're getting zero returned. Um, but if we did, we'd, we'd get the number. But if we did, we'd see the memory returned in bytes here. Okay, so we've got a short exercise here. What would you expect if you called neg like this here? And how is that different to above? So this example here. So hopefully that's going back to our module on lists and atoms. You, you can remember the difference here. This first example here is passing a list and this second one is passing three separate atoms. So let's just run that to see. You can see the first example here. I'm passing a list neg. The second one, this is also passes a list neg. So they ran fine. The third one, I'm getting a rank error. And that's because this here is saying I'm passing three separate parameters and as neg is a monadic function, that's not gonna work. Okay, um, we've got a short exercise here. How many arguments does the operator mod have? So you can have a check on our 
reference card here, go and find out the, the mod function and take a look at that. So I think we're here. So we can see it's taking two parameters there. And you would have been able to check that out as well and try that with this code. Okay, so let's leave it there and I'll see you in the next video when we look at defining your own functions.